Happy Arvo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. And welcome to Do This Week in Australia. That's right. We're all the way from up top here in Indiana. I'm going down under. Through the tubes to see what happened in Australia this week using the Australian subreddit. And I must say, right off the bat, I already looked at this post. Usually this is the kind of post I would skip over because it's like political and kind of like weird. <laughs> but it's the top post of the week. So we're going to have to read into it. I mean, it's about Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's ideology driving. I'm not going to read these words because YouTube doesn't like them, but you can read them. All sorts of harassment and stuff in Australian classrooms. It's so weird how connected the world is. In some ways, it's good. And in other ways, it's like, really? All the way across the world in Australia, this British guy is affecting people in Australia. I think he's British. America. Like, all over the world. And he's just some dude on the internet. Isn't that crazy? Um, and anyway, it's about this teacher that, you know, her dream job was to become a teacher in Australia at this high school. I think it's the high school she went to and some boys were basically harassing her and she quit after her first year. I don't think people realize how young this stuff is targeting now. Having a few friends that are primary school teachers and they're horrified. Primary school teachers, that's one, that's kindergarten through um, 12, right? 10, 11-year-old boys having deep anxiety about infidelity and not being attractive enough. That has got to be the worst effect of all. I mean, people have been talking about this for decades now. And it's only gotten worse. And it used to be mostly about women. You know, it was all the magazines and the photoshopping on the covers of the magazines. And it was like causing young girls to feel insufficient. And now it's all happening to little boys as well. And it's just like, ew. Gross. They shouldn't have to even be thinking about this stupid crap. I sure wasn't when I was 10. Maybe when I was like 14, I started thinking, am I, am I good looking? You know, all that crap, <laughs> which is a bunch of crap, um, by the way. If there's any 10 or 14-year-old boys watching, uh, don't worry about it. I mean, of course, worry about just being healthy. Try to be healthy. That's about all you got to worry about. From there, it's mostly just confidence in yourself. And be nice. That works out decently. <laughs> um, let's see. One of my friends went to IT and got several websites blocked because 10-year-olds were looking up mewing tutorials. And I guess, I mean, I assume... I only know what that even is because of, like, TikTok comments. I hate TikTok, by the way. <laughs> but I I, uh, I read it in some comments. You know, it's like you put your tongue on the top of your mouth to try to get your chin to look chiseled. It's pretty much the stupidest thing ever. And 10-year-olds should not be worrying about it. No one should even be worrying about it. Not a parent or educator, so I genuinely can't think of any solutions other than reducing screen time. That is a really hard thing to do in this day and age as well. You know, it's a really genuinely difficult thing to do. Screens are becoming more and more ever-present in our lives, and now they're honestly trying to make it so that screens are on our face, and we're just going to live our life with a screen in front of us and see everything through the screen. <laughs> I guess there's a little bit of ir irony that I'm a YouTuber saying this, but 
it's all good in moderation, in my opinion. And it also is totally dependent on the content people are watching. And it's mostly about kids. Man, it's, it, it is a challenging world that kids are growing up into. All right, let's move on. Useless real estate agent signs. <laughs> okay. Why is this the second to top post? Am I missing something? I saw these signs on Ringwood and don't understand what they're trying to achieve. Maybe starting a K-pop band. <laughs> Porter. We have to go deeper, folks. I mean, these guys look like they're professionals at mewing and at real estate. So, you know, I trust them. <laughs> this is funny. Um, I've, I, why is real estate like that? Because it's kind of like that here in America, too, where they show the real estate agents on all the, the billboards and stuff. You know, to try and sell their services, they show the real estate agent as if I care what they look like. Like, I don't care what you look like. Tell me something about what, the, you know, is your take rate lower? <laughs> you know what I'm, are you going to save me money? I don't care what you, I don't. I think this captures the industry perfectly. Imagine the meetings they had in the office. We need to update our signage. Perhaps we should include more details of the house for sale? Pictures? The price? I've got it. Portraits of ourselves. <laughs> That's amazing that it's that way in Australia as well. What is it about real estate? Somebody needs to tell me why. I think it's because real estate agents are, they're like self-employed usually. Usually, I mean, also they go through like, you know, organizations and stuff, but it's mostly about, you know, earning commissions for yourself. And so they view it as like themselves is the product. I, I think, I, I don't know. It's a weird approach and a weird phenomenon. This is definitely an act of war. All right, let's, let's see this. What am I even looking at, folks? 20 most bizarre foods in the world. Cheese infested with maggots. Century egg. So a really old spoiled egg. Stew made with dog meat. Boiled fruit bat soup. We're definitely going to get some kind of virus if people keep eating this kind of stuff. <laughs> Some kind of new virus. Fish. Moving on. Grilled cow udder. They eat that in Argentina. Cooked tuna eyeballs. Egg is cooked in the... Um, we're moving on. Great value, hands down. Took this photo on the 30th of March at the Coles back room where we keep the bins. Found a bunch of perfectly good hot cross buns thrown away, so I thought I would send a photo as your friendly neighborhood Coles employee. Ew. There's something really, really disgusting about this photo. And off-putting about seeing all this good, I mean, it looks like good food, all inside of a dumpster. What a waste. I miss when shit would get discounted at the supermarket. I swear they only take like 20 cents off it now and just toss it when it doesn't sell. They probably do, you know what I mean? They're probably like, hey... People were buying too much of the discounted stuff. We're not making much of a profit off that. We need to just take that off the shelves. <laughs> I love when all the signs in the dump room of... I love all the signs in the dump room of reduce waste, and then they do stuff like that. Even better when it's stuff that hasn't even been marked down because it's going out of date. What is a dump room? I mean, this is pretty much just the saddest 
news story I've ever heard. A father and grandfather holidaying in Victoria drown attempting to rescue a two-year-old child. Child in the hotel pool. What? Aged 65 and 38 had jumped into the pool to try and rescue a two-year-old relative paramedics say had slipped and fallen in. While the child was pulled from the water unharmed, the two men, who were father and grandfather to that child, were unable to be revived. It's understood the entire family was on holiday from Victoria and staying at the hotel apartment when this happened. The hotel pool is several stories above street level, but people in the area last night and this morning said they could hear screams around the time of the incident. School holidays have just started in Queensland and Surface Paradise is very busy with Easter long weekend visitors too. Paramedics say they often see an increase in drownings around public holidays. And wow. Uh... Well, I mean, uh, it's a very noble act that they went out attempting to rescue and, and successfully rescuing their baby and grandchild. I just can't believe that that happened. That's so. Was no one there that could that knew how to swim that could rescue them? I, apparently not. That is a freak accident. Well, rest in peace to those two. You know, this might be either the first or maybe the second ever post I've ever read that is actually, like, in favor of Kohl's. <laughs> and it's comparing Kohl's $4 hot cross buns. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I thought the coals were on top. Oh, geez. Okay, the yeah, yeah, another strike against coals. Hey, coals, three hundred strikes and you're out. That's the coals buns on the bottom. Versus IGA buns on top. Those look freaking delicious up top there. Um, I've never had a hot cross bun. I've never seen them. I just know the song, Hot Cross Buns. Um, these look like they've been stepped on down here. Damn, I'm, I'm kind of sad. I thought this was finally a post to like, you know, something good about Kohl's. Nope. IGA. That's kind of fascinating. IGA here in Indiana is like a relatively small grocery chain. I don't know if it's affiliated with this one or if that's just a coincidence. But that's pretty weird if you guys have IGA. Maybe it originated in Australia? I don't know. But over here in America, it's like really small. In fact, I didn't know it existed up until I moved to Indiana. And it's not... I, I get the vibe it's going out of business. Um, but apparently you guys have it all the way over there in Australia. I have to... I have to look it up real quick. Australia IGA. That looks like the same logo. That's kind of mind blowing. You guys have IGA all the way over there down under. Even though it's like not that big over here. Is it an American company? Oh my god, it is. Independent Grocers of Australia? Wait, is this affiliated with IGA? Now I'm just confused. Why would we have that here in America? But it's the same logo. Hold on. Yeah, here's the one. This is the website for the IGA that's, you know, in Indiana. Same logo. I had no freaking clue. That stands for Independent Grocers of Australia. All this time. I had no idea. Well, why don't you guys shop there? Why does anybody shop at Colts? 
So here's like a graphic that shows who owns which Australian foods in the confectionery aisle. As you can see, most of it's, you know, Mars and Mondelez. And there's some Hershey's. I didn't even know what Mondelez was, but apparently it's an American multinational confectionery. And Mars is an American company. And of course, Hershey's is. So a whole bunch of that food is technically owned by an American company. Weird. I don't, I don't recognize almost any of these other ones. Oh, there's Nestle. Jeez, Mars is huge. Woolworths. Woolworths. Sorry. The most quintessentially Australian sign you're likely to see. Let's see. Strong rips. Large waves. Sounds like fun so far. Slippery rocks. Oh boy. Submerged rocks. That's dangerous. Cliff risk. And then there's just a giant spider. Is that on? Is is that actually that big? At first, I thought that was part of the sign. I think that's a giant spider on top of the sign. And I definitely thought this was a helicopter here. <laughs> that would be a shark. Yeah, you would know you're in Australia if you saw this sign, huh? In case you didn't realize it. Just notice the hand scroll of snakes under the huntsman. <laughs> Is that a shark chopper warning? I hate those things. Swoop down and take you straight off your board. Hmm, I wonder if there are any snakes. I'm surprised they didn't have a uh, warning sign for snakes. You guys had to go and scribble it on there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a phenomenal weekend. I hope you join me again next week. You know what I mean? I'll be here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Goodbye.